So what is osteomyelitis and how can it be caused by a dental procedure gone wrong? Hi, my name is Charles Bust and I'm a dental malpractice lawyer. And in this video, we're going to talk all about osteomyelitis and go over an example of how dental malpractice can cause it. So let's get right into it. Let's start out by talking about one of the most obvious examples of dental malpractice involving osteomyelitis or a bone infection. So a patient goes in to have a wisdom tooth extracted. And during the extraction, the dentist fractures or breaks the patient's jaw. Now, the dentist doesn't notice the fracture or otherwise doesn't tell the patient about it. Instead, the dentist just sends the patient home to recover like nothing unusual happened. Over time, the patient develops osteomyelitis in the jaw, which starts growing in the fracture. The dentist doesn't notice it for several months, despite the patient's continuous complaints of pain and other issues. Eventually, the patient sees another doctor who diagnoses her with osteomyelitis. As a result of the delay in treatment and the resulting spread of the osteomyelitis, the patient loses a huge portion of her jaw and needs hundreds of thousands of dollars in reconstructive surgery and bone transplants. Additionally, the patient suffers permanent nerve damage and loses all feeling in her lips, chin, face, and jaw. Now, that was a pretty intense example of osteomyelitis, but this kind of thing happens. Although we talked about osteomyelitis in the context of wisdom tooth extraction, osteomyelitis can also develop as a result of extractions of other teeth and dental implant procedures. In fact, any procedure that might expose the patient's bone to bacteria could theoretically result in osteomyelitis. So what types of osteomyelitis cases can be tied back to dental malpractice? In other words, what types of osteomyelitis cases are more likely to form the basis of a successful dental malpractice case or a case where the patient can prove that the patient suffered damages as a result of dental malpractice? Well, the issue here is that infections are a risk of dental procedures. So, when we're talking about dental malpractice and osteomyelitis, we need to be able to point to some genesis of the infection that is due to negligence, as opposed to an infection developing in the absence of obvious negligence on the part of the dentist. For example, in the case of a broken jaw during a wisdom tooth extraction that we talked about earlier, there's an obvious genesis of the osteomyelitis that is not normal or acceptable because breaking a patient's jaw is a mistake that should be addressed and dealt with immediately. Thus, if a dentist breaks the patient's jaw and then does not address that fracture, the dentist has endangered the patient and made it more likely that the patient will develop osteomyelitis. Thus, if the dentist sends the patient home compromised and susceptible to osteomyelitis, and then the patient develops osteomyelitis, it's hard for the dentist to deny liability. The same logic applies in other contexts where there is a potential dental malpractice claim involving osteomyelitis. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you or a loved one has developed osteomyelitis after a dental procedure, and especially if that osteomyelitis is a result of a fractured jaw during a wisdom tooth extraction, there may be legal options available. If you'd like to know more, you can always schedule a free consultation with us so that we can talk with you about what happened. All you have to do to schedule a free consultation with us is call the number below in the video description. Or you can visit us at our dental malpractice page at www.carelessdentist.com. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was kind of brutal, but we'll see you next time.